Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. Today's topic is very important, but one rarely discussed. That topic is failure. I have a lot of experiences with failure and would like to share a few of those with you with the hopes that it will amuse, if not also inspire you. You too can fail if you only try hard enough. These up close and personal examples begin with some simple activities that we can all relate to. Then we move on to some more adventurous failures and then with some examples from business. We finish with my three step plan for failure. This show is a bit longer and may not be suitable for every workplace even though there's absolutely no objectionable or questionable content. If that is the case, you can always view it on a home computer. Still, I really think this show is a rare treat, something you will not want to miss. Of course, we must first deal with the Lake Wobegon effect that is named after Garrison Keillor's fictional town in Minnesota. However, it's not just a Nordic trait to think of oneself as a rock star. Survey after survey show that more than 90% of the people think they are above average with regard to most of the things they hold dear. We must overcome this effect if we are to embrace failure. Being good at failure requires us to balance between the extremes of humility and confidence. If we scratch beneath the surface of this obvious Photoshop conceit, we already find failure. This Fender Strat is one of three musical instruments that I have failed to learn well enough so that anyone besides myself, and maybe not even myself, would enjoy listening. There are many, many other things like this on my lifetime list of failures. I have been a gardener all of my life, and I have killed more than 1,000 species of plants. I know this because I used to keep a database until it became so much trouble to maintain. Trying to figure out which plants I killed over the Wisconsin winter and which were yet to be killed. There's a saying among gardeners, if you really like a plant, don't stop until you've killed it at least three times. Persistence is one of the traits of failures such as myself. Plants also teach us two other lessons. The first is to learn the specific needs of the species and try and provide for it. The second is to not become too attached to anything in this world. Even perennials don't live forever. Another hobby I've had for most of my life is photography. I have taken and curated more than 50,000 photos using a wide variety of cameras from pinhole to 35 millimeter film to infrared to 3D and even 360 degree video. I even now fancy myself as a bit of a videographer, but we will let you be the judge here. Again, we have failure. I started a photography business, mostly drone videos for real estate and as a second-rate wedding photographer. Four years later, I closed the business because it didn't even pay for the expenses. Cameras are expensive. Still, I did win a single photography award and that photo hung in the Trout Museum of Art for a month. Yet, these examples of failure are pretty lame and pretty tame. To really up the ante for failure, we must add an element of risk that goes beyond mere spare time and money. Before we move on to some of my helmeted hobbies where life and limb are literally put at risk, I would like to observe that you can also put your ego at risk. Perhaps one of the better ways to do this is ballroom dancing. Even better yet, would be to enter amateur competition where not only can you sense that you fall short, you know it by the scoring of the adjudicators. I generally place near the bottom of most contests whether I dance with my wife, 
my instructor shown here, or another student. Because of this consistency, I can only conclude that it is me that is the failure rather than my dance partner. Let me share an important observation on dancing. That is, there are far fewer men dancers than women. This may be due to the male egos not allowing them to embrace failure. If you want to be a good failure, you need to abandon your ego and perhaps even your dignity. Let me move on to the first of four helmeted hobbies where the risk of failure can be injury or even worse. I began skating late in life when I was in my mid-40s. I fell in love with it. What began as a wobbly trip around the block on inline skates eventually progressed to longer and longer skates that culminated in a marathon 100 kilometers in a single day. Then I picked up jam skating which is something like breakdancing on skates. My specialty is to toe jam, where you arch up like a ballerina onto your toes and do rubber leg moves to the music. Aggressive skating at skate parks with ramps and half pipes. Sometimes the kids call me grandpa, perhaps because I'm the only one that does not need a parental signature. This failure to fit in does not bother me. Failure to fit in is one of the most important traits of failures such as myself. Of course I fall. I fall about once a week and I get pretty good at it. That is, except on one occasion where I dislocated my shoulder at the skate park and had to put it back in a Mel Gibson moment. Now let's move on to the second of my four helmeted hobbies. I was an ACA rated whitewater kayak instructor. I mostly taught Boy Scouts, Venturing Crew, and the very few parents that are not so afraid of being upside down in a low oxygen environment. This next video, wearing a waterproof helmet camera, was my attempt to show my students how to navigate a particularly difficult Class 3 waterfalls. I and plenty of others had much experience with this waterfall. We know that things might not always turn out as planned. So, if you are given lemons, make lemonade as they say. This first part is the lemons of getting trashed in a waterfall. The second part is the video teaching of others what not to do. How about if we slow this down and see what we can learn from the experience? We see ahead a very narrow entrance and we must make a slight S to stay in the main channel. Within a few seconds, we see our first hole that we need to punch through in order to get past the second, much bigger one that follows. Timing may be everything. In this narrow channel, we have one last chance for a good stroke before we clear the second hole. The mistake may seem small and brief, but I did not land on a good stroke.
If you do not clear the hole with momentum, you will get sucked back into it. Bigger holes will roll you round and round and round and it may not let you loose. Except, if you change your shape, you may get kicked out. Rope! Good paddlers watch out for their buddies, and they're ready to help. Priorities are body first, then paddle, then boat. Pride goeth before the falls. This next video is an example of a third helmeted hobby, motorcycles, or in this case, a motorized bicycle. Please observe carefully the reactions of the bystanders that are wide ranging, as is often the case with failures such as myself. Note last summer I had a pretty scary e-bike crash, but I still ride regularly because I just don't seem to learn from my mistakes. This is my latest bicycle project, a 1964 Jaguar made by Schwinn. It's got a two-speed red band uh, transmission, and it's been thoroughly restored to original with a couple add-ons. We have some electronic add-ons. We have a speedometer, odometer. But the main thing we have here that makes this bike different is a three horsepower nitro alcohol burning airplane engine which should be sized such that I can reach 50 miles an hour without pedaling. I do have some concerns. The throttle doesn't work and I don't have a front brake so I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful here but nonetheless within those restrictions we're gonna go for a little higher throttle run now. So the first thing I'm going to do is put on a safety helmet. Then I'm going to put on my leather gloves. This isn't for the cold. This is in case I actually get hit by this uh, propeller. You can take a finger off. So we got to be a little careful. This is called the chicken stick. As you might imagine, it's because chickens don't want to get too close to that blade. This is a um, starter plug. 
And so we're going to first check to make sure that the throttle is about a quarter. And then we're going to check the needle valve setting, which is pretty good from where it was. And then we're going to give it some juice and attempt to start it. Throttling up to three quarter. It's still a new engine, so I got to be a little careful with it. Coming up on my first steep hill, still only dialing in 5% nitro. It's still a new engine. I have to be careful. Pedometer showing a respectable 12 miles an hour without pedaling. Checking brakes under full throttle conditions. Good, looks like I can stop. What a grouch. You'd think I was a nitro-powered no-no or something. Pay attention to what you're doing. I think rocket power skates have been done before. Everybody stares as if they've never seen a nitro-powered Schwinn before. Engine turning about 8,000 RPM. Speed about 20 miles per hour. And the throttle is stuck.
boy? Yes, dear. Uh, yes, dear. Yes, dear. Uh, yes, dear. Now, this was by no means my first experience with bicycles or even airplane engines. Some time ago, I fell in love with radio controlled airplanes. Unfortunately, I crashed a dozen airplanes before I taught myself to be a good aerobatic model flyer. The process was one of frequent failures. At its worst, three weeks of building might yield only 30 seconds of flying time before the next build or repair cycle. And the planes got bigger. And the planes got bigger still. Inspiration for failure can come from any number of sources. This particular one was an ad in the back of a model airplane magazine on a kit for a full-size airplane that you could fly. This is where overconfidence can help. I said to myself, you know, self, I think you could build one of these. It's just like an oversized wooden model airplane. So, for the next two years and 2,000 hours, I built this airplane in my basement. During this time, I also took the courses and lessons required to pass and earn a private pilot license. Initially, this project turned out to be a success in many ways. It was a great plane to fly. I showed it at several air shows, including the largest in the world the EAA at Oshkosh. I even won an award at one small air show, the People's Choice Award at the annual Spud Fly-In at Antigo. I got a plaque and all the potatoes I could carry home, which wasn't many in the case of this tiny airplane. However, as a certified failure, I know that all good things must eventually come to an end. After three years and 300 hours of flying this plane, I had an engine failure. It was at the worst possible time, at night. It was at the worst possible place, over a city. It reminded me of the gallows humor at one of my private pilot instruction classes. A student asked the teacher if one should use lights during an emergency night landing. The teacher thought about it for a bit and said, Turn the lights on initially, and if you don't like what you see, turn them off. The pilot had quite a scare tonight when he was forced to make an emergency landing after his engine failed him. The good news is the pilot was able to walk away from that crash without a scratch. And night team reporter Gary Horker is at the scene of the crash and joins us now live with the latest. Gary. Well, Kemi, I'm standing in the very end of Old School Road here in Nina, and just here behind me, is where this small experimental homemade aircraft finally came to rest after a harrowing emergency landing. But the pilot, a 40-year-old Nina man, was able to walk away from the wreckage. Now, the pilot tells me he was coming back from a short trip to Sturgeon Bay. He was planning on seeing the fall colors, but he was also planning on landing the plane at Brennan Field, and that's about five miles from here. Suddenly, he says his engine died. He went down fast. He saw this road, and he went for it. Apparently, the engine quit. He found this pretty much deserted road, tried to put her down, and kind of ran off to the side, and things kind of went bad. Now, the pilot tells me off camera he is an experienced, skilled pilot, and there are two reasons, good reasons, to believe him tonight. Where he started his landing to my left, about 100 yards down, it's in between a residential area and a school area. He was able to avoid that. And the wing just behind me, he tells me, was completely filled with fuel. He was very, very lucky that he was, had the skill enough to set it down as gently as he did. 
and avoid catching on fire. Now, I understand the uh, NTSB and the FAA will be here uh, come morning light to conduct their own investigation. Cammie? All right, we'll hear more from that tomorrow. Still, I don't seem to be able to learn from my lessons, even the hard lessons. I continue to fly, this time a cream puff 1949 Cessna 170B. I hope this very small sampling of personal failures illustrates my credentials as a multifaceted failure. My failure in business has been no less spectacular. Having been in 1,000 plants doing troubleshooting, it would not be totally surprising that some of these visits ended in trouble. But I don't want to bore you with my tech failures. Instead, I would like to close with an inspirational message of hope. That is, you too can be a failure if you only try hard enough. Here, I offer my three-step plan that any of you can use. Step one is to be well-read and well-studied in any area you want to take on. For example, I read books and literally went to school on all of my helmeted hobbies. Step two, you know in your heart that the costs and risks are gonna be much higher than people say, but push on anyway. You know that you will be the exception. Finally, you need to be entirely focused on your project. If you get unsolicited advice from others, you can generally ignore it because they've not studied the area nearly so much as you have. No matter how hard one tries though, you simply cannot fail at everything. One success I've had is to stay happily married to the same fine woman for more than 44 years. Still, I can only claim partial credit in this case. Obviously, my wife Jane has had to put up with much. Thank you so very much for staying with me for this unusually long and unusually personal video. Stay tuned for next week's show where I will share my biggest professional failure and what I learned from it. If you have a topic you would like to hear about, let me know in the comment section below. If you found any of these stories to be interesting or useful, please like and share and subscribe. And remember not to forget to check out the show notes for surprises. See you next time.